During tonight's webinar, Senior Product Manager Amr Asal will show you a live demonstration of ModMed pathology. Following Amr's demonstration, Dr. Matthew Pettit of Southeast Dermatology will talk about his experience using the ModMed pathology module in his practice. And at this point, I will turn it over to Amr. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, spending uh, an hour with us this evening. I'm very happy to introduce you to our ModMed pathology module. So we really see this as a module that's tightly integrated with Emma and really would streamline the performance in your lab. And I'm not going to talk a lot about the benefits. I will leave this to Dr. Pettit. He will elaborate on his experience and the benefits he's seen uh, since he's adopted the pathology module. But it really covers end-to-end -end from the experience from the time the clinician, the dermatologist does the uh, biopsy all the way until the report is generated and sent back to the dermatologist to review and sign and communicate with the patient. Uh, it's fully integrated, as I mentioned, and it's really, given that EMA is in 30% of the dermatology market, we see this is really as the pathology EMR of the future. And this is actually a statement that I got from one of our clients that have, has used the module, and he sort of described it that way. So we do see that this is really the, the future of integrating pathology with an EMR uh, offering. It's primarily designed for three uh, general use cases. One, practices that outsource the technical component and then get the slides back and read them in-house. Practices that perform both the TC, the technical and the professional components in-house. And also for labs, if your practice has a larger lab and you not only read your own uh, slides from your own dermatologist, but you also read for outside practices and you receive the requisition and the specimens and you actually can then input them in the module, generate the report and send it back to the uh, referring provider. The, just a quick sort of how things are if you had a separate LIS system from your EMR and then it, sort of how it is once you integrate or you use the ModMed pathology and it's integrated with EMA. So you have your EMR, you generate a requisition, it goes to the LIS system uh, where the dermatopathologist reads the slides. Uh, the EMR obviously is separate. Uh, if you're working on the LIS system, uh, the lab technicians, the pathologists have no way to access patient information like their chart, any medications they're on. They can't access images that were taken in the, uh, during the visit while the biopsy was performed. So they're really working based on the requisition that they've received. They basically read the slides, generate a path report, and it's sent back to the dermatologist. Then there is manual entry of the billing information into the practice management system. Now, with EMA and the ModMed pathology module, basically they're one system. Everybody has access to all information about the patient. So you can envision sort of the, the patient chart is now moved into the, the pathology module or the LIS system, and the lab technicians the dermatopathologist, they, he or she, they have access to all the patient information. They generate the report and then it goes back to the clinical side. Automatically, everything is loaded in the results log. There is no need for any type of manual entry. And it also goes back as a patient attachment in EMA. And then, in addition, the final step is the billing is automated in this case. So there is no need to, again, manually enter any type of data if you do have a, a charge bridge uh, with EMA. So if you look at these three check marks there, there is sort of manual entry or data entry at each one of these areas. And the ModMath pathology uh, module eliminates all this data entry. So you'll see a lot of uh, savings in time printing, scanning, and data entry. In addition to the fact that really you're making, you know, it is patient-centric in a sense that you get all the patient information, you make decisions with all the information at your fingertips. So efficiency, patient first, 
It's integrated with Emma and it automates billing. And again, uh, as I mentioned, I will let Dr. Pettit sort of elaborate on his experience. So let's demo the module. There is a setup component in the module. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing today because I want to sort of focus again on, on benefits and how it's a, sort of the workflow and how it, it's the integration with Emma is very beneficial. Uh, I will just do one piece of the settings. In the firm admin account of Emma, under practice settings, there is a section down here which really will be your pathology uh, module. And you notice there is a manage accession sequence set setting button. There is a manage settings and a manage pathology providers. Here you actually get to make any dermatologist uh, also have sort of slide reading rights. Manage settings gives you the ability to create defaults for the gross uh, stage of the module. You set your defaults and I'll elaborate when I, I use the module. And then we give you a library of diagnosis where you can copy it and make your own. So there's about 960 diagnoses. You use them to your, uh, make them your own, and then you can edit them and change or add your own diagnosis. We also give you a bank of stains, and we give you a set of abbreviations or macros, and you get to make them your own, and then you can edit them or add uh, your abbreviations. What I want to focus on here is, is really the accession sequences. So we support multiple types of accession sequences. You basically say, add a new sequence here. And as you see, we have three types. We have an auto sequence, a manual sequence, and what we call freeform. The auto sequence is recommended. Emma manages the accession numbers for you. And it's really uh, to, be, to be used in most of, most of the cases. The one exception is uh, when you outsource the technical component. When you outsource the technical component and you don't accession in-house, we, we recommend that you use the manual sequence because you have no control on the numbers. The, the lab that you send your specimens to accessions those specimens for you, and then they send you uh, the number uh, with the gross report and the slides. It, it's obviously a great benefit even if you outsource the technical component, if you can talk to the labs you're working with and have them allow you to accession in-house. It'll save you even more time. The free form is used for the cases where you decide to use uh, accession numbers that are completely outside Emma. In some cases, some labs uh, have labels that are pre-printed with a barcode, and they just want to scan that barcode in the accession field and save it that way. Uh, so again, we have the auto, we have the manual, and the free form. Another use for the free form too is to fill in the gaps. If you, if you end up with any gaps in your sequence, the free form can fill those gaps if that is a requirement in your uh, lab. Let's create an auto sequence. I'm going to give it a description and a prefix. The year is 16, I'm going to do it, make it a four-digit sequence. So I'm going to start it at, let's say, 1001. So I'm going to put 1000 here. And next year, when 2017 comes, I want it to start at 1. We'll take care of that for you. And Emma generates requisitions with body locations with letters. We support in the pathology module both letters and numbers. So I'm going to keep them as letters. And we're doing both technical and professional in that scenario, there is not going to be a 26 modifier, so I'll leave this as no. Now I'm going to save. And there is the sequence created, category auto, it's active, you can always deactivate it. Um, I'm also going to create quickly a manual sequence just to show you how it's used later on. In case of manual, again, I'm going to give it in a description. And the prefix in this case is MPM, let's say, and it's the year. The number then is completely managed outside the module. So 
having done the setup here, I'm going to move on now to the actual module. And here we are. I'm logged in as a provider. Um, so I'm going to quickly pick a patient. I already have some requisitions actually set up, but I'll take you through the process of creating a requisition quickly. So I'm going to pick a patient. I'm going to create a visit. I'm going to go to the virtual exam room. And I'm going to pick a findings here and do a biopsy by shave, pick a body location, and the internal lab is defined already here. So that's really part of the workflow. When you use the pathology module, you have to route your orders to the internal lab. So in this case, I've created a lab called ModMath Pathology Intern. It's an internal lab with a lab facility. And I'm going to say done with this location. Um, I don't really want to get into putting any details. I could put the size here and make sure the routing is correct and say done with this location. Um, and say done. And I'm going to move on, save the note. And we have our path requisition created at this point. Here it is. It's going to an internal lab, the patient information, and the body location we have uh, created. Now, one of the things that in the requisitions I've already set up, it, when, the dermat, when the dermatologist is in the, v, in the exam room with the patient and doing the biopsy, if they take pictures while they're taking the biopsy and they attach them to the body location, these pictures will be available in the pathology module. Any pictures taken in, the, taken in the VE room during the visit and that are linked to the body location will be available for the technicians while grossing and for the pathologists while they're reading the slides. Again, that's, sort of, that's the part of the, the power of the integration here. So let's uh, go back to uh, the module here. Uh, once you create a requisition and you save the note in EMMA, Everything goes to the eLab tab under outbound orders. So here are all the requisitions that uh, this is the one I just did in addition to the others I have created. So this is where sort of the last place where, for example, the MA or nurse or whoever is responsible in your practice for sending uh, the requisitions with the specimens out, they can come in here and make sure everything is correct. They can always go to the visit and change things if something isn't correct, if the visit hasn't been finalized, or look at the patient's information. The way this is routed to the module is you basically select the ones you want to route. And I'll pick these here. And I will say, send orders. Let me get into the pathology module. Here they are in this uh, in the ready to accession so on the left hand side here you have the workflow the accessioning grossing reading hold for additional stains hold for tests read after hold which is uh, where you read slides if they were held for stains or sent for a second opinion or peer review then you have the completed screen where you get to sign the reports um, and we have a, two reporting two extensive reporting screens the reporting, the reporting screen covers all the activity in the lab, uh, and I will go over it. And the stain report covers everything that has to do with immunohistochemistry stains or additional stains that are ordered. And then we, uh, we support uh, slide labels, printing of slide labels. The, are the ones that are about one inch squared or 15 over 16 uh, inch squared. And if you have multiple pathologists in-house, can, they can actually customize their own diagnosis. So in this case, each pathologist can have their own diagnosis if they do, if they do things in a certain way and it's not shareable but with others, other pathologists. In the screen, you can reject a case. You, you mark it and you say it's rejected if you want to and you give a reason. You can also add, I'm not going to get into the details of this, but you can, as I said, manually enter a requisition if you get them from outside your practice. Once you've entered them manually, they become part of the workflow and part of the module. You can just proceed with them 
as any other requisition that you've received from Emma. Finally, you can to get actually accession the uh, requisition. So the way to do this, if you do one at a time, you pick, you select it, and you say assign an accession. So I'm going to uh, do this right now. Let's pick this one here and say assign an accession. In here now, you can assign it to a dermatopathologist. It's optional. You, th then you get to pick the sequence. If you have a single sequence only, you, this will appear uh, pre-selected, so you don't have to actually do an additional click. Uh, so if I decide to go with the auto sequence, and I say generate, okay, it generates the numbers for me. MM manages the process. It's the 1001 A and B. So everything is done for me with Emma. I don't have to worry about, we, you can, we will never duplicate numbers. We generate the numbers in a way that it, they will never be repeated. And we also check while saving it to the database that there are no duplicates. So I can say save. And it's been accessioned and moved onto the growth screen. Now to just show you quickly in case some on the line here will outsource the technical component and have to do this manually. If you decide to ass assign an accession manually and you use the manual sequence, you will enter the number manually here. So you would track the numbers outside. I could say something like, you know, 200, 2012. And I'll put the suffix A and I say save. And it's done. Um, once you accession, they move on to the grow screen. And here they are, the three cases I just did. We give you, you know, multiple ways where you can find cases. If you have a barcode handheld scanner and you actually use the slides we print that they have a barcode, you can use them to place them in the accession number, scan the barcode, and it will pre-populate the accession number, and then you can find that case. Otherwise, if you prefer working by patient, searching for a specific patient or a specific provider that did the biopsy, you know, you can do. So we give you multiple ways to find the uh, requisition or the specimen. Again, just to, to, to sort of re-emphasize the integration here, at any time I can go and see the patient. Here is the patient chart. At any time I can see the specific visit where the biopsy was done. Here it is. So again, all of this is available at your fingertips. Uh, and this is the requisition which I've shown you before. Now, when you gross, you can you, you open the case here, and it basically notice it's already pre-selected. There are items that are pre-selected here, and that comes from the default screen I touched upon. And all of this is optional. You basically pick the things you want to fill. Uh, you get to do the fixative, the descriptors, where you put the size. You can put, use this widget we give you or you can just use type in, or you can even dictate. If you happen to have Dragon and it's on the machine, you can actually dictate in every field here and not have to type anything. You will also tell us how many cassettes you have, how many pieces per cassette, and how many numbers, how slides are you gonna make per cassette. Now this is also came, all came from the default. Uh, I can always add additional cassettes, and I can say my first cassette has one piece and one slide, my, I have another cassette that also has one piece and, you know, one slide, let's say. You can um, say done and open next for here, which will open the next case for you, or you can also add orientation mark, inking, if you case you, you do inking, and we have the concept of macros or abbreviations I discussed, and you can use it here if you want to put any sort of standard statement you can use your macro here to have it expand. Now, here are the images from the VE room, as I mentioned. If the dermatologist took pictures, they're available for you here in uh, the module, and you can click on it and see the picture. Uh, we also, for those of you who outsource the technical component, we let you enter manually the gross description uh, you can use macros that you set up, so you can set up your macros, and for example, okay, sorry. there you go. So I, I set up sort of an example before this webinar here, where I created a template for a possible gross description, and then I can fill in 
the size, let's say, uh, and you can create as many of those as you want if you decide to use the manual route versus the structured data. Obviously, if you do the structure, there are a lot of benefits because we know how many cassettes you've made, how many pieces, how many slides, and we can help you generate the labels for the slides and track the, the productivity or how many cassettes you've used over a period of time and so on. So, you know, you should start trying to use the structured if you can. If you're outsourcing the technical component, you go with the manual. So I'm going to say done and open next here. It closes this one and opens the next one for me. And I, you know, I can keep as a, as a histotech in the lab, I can go from one case to the other in order based on the accession number. So I will do this case quickly here. Put some size here. And for now, that's more than enough. And I'll say this time done. I don't want to go to the next case. Done with gross. When you finish, it sort of disappears from the screen because we wanted to remove any clutter. They actually don't go anywhere. We do have a, a filter here that defaults to grossing done no. If you want to see them at any time, you say grossing done yes, search, here they are. Once you're done grossing them, they move to the ready to read screen. Here they are, and I, this is where uh, the pathologist, the pathologist, would read the slides. And you can open a case here. Here is the gross description. You can always edit it if you wish. You can just click here. It brings up the gross screen. You don't have to go looking for it. It's right there at your fingertip. You can hold the case for a second opinion. You put the reason and say sending to UCSF, let's say, and I'm going to say put it on hold. So I'm just going to pretend here that uh, this case, and by the way, here are the images, that this case is being held for a second opinion. And then I'm going to go to B, the next case. Uh, this screen is driven, I can assign the case to me if I want to. This screen is driven by the alias. You don't have, you're going, if you do the setup, if you take the library we gave you, edit it or add your own, it's all driven by the alias here. So I can start typing my alias and find it and see here, it's, it fills the screen for you. So this all comes from the setup, the diagnosis the diagnosis description, the microscopic, and any comments that you added would also show up. We calculate the IC data on the fly for you. It's calculated based on the body location uh, and the structure diagnosis. And we also, here is the CPT code, which you can always change in case you're doing it. It's a consultation. You can change the ICD, the CPT code. Uh, modifier is TC or 26. And since we're doing the, the whole global here, there was no modifier. At any time, you can edit what you, what you have from the setup, or you can use the macros to say things like consistent with. Uh, basically, the abbreviations here add text to the field on the right. So the more you set up, the more you create your macros and abbreviations, you won't have to really type at the screen at all. Um, if you want to order immunohistochemistry stains, you basically click on order tests here. You get your options to do, for example, additional levels and so on. You get to pick the cassette. In this case, we only had one, B1. And you can always order stains uh, from over here. And there is a shortcut here you can do in the setup where you can create panels of tests. If you know that you order the same tests, with, if you suspect a certain diagnosis, you can set them up driven by the same alias, and it will save you time. When you fix your test, you say order, and you say save, and they're both gone because they moved on to other stages. The case that where you order additional stains goes back to the lab. They open it up. They see that they have to do these tests. They set up this. They create the slides, and when they're ready, they send them back to the uh, dermatopathologist to read, they can delete tests if they were ordered by mistake. We say ready to read again when they're done. Now, the other case which was held for a second opinion, everything really converges in here. You can filter by why it was held. So you can, if you wanna, you know, you got that second opinion report a week later and you wanna find that case, you can basically filter by second opinion and it will give you that second opinion case. We open it up. Notice you have a place to upload your second opinion report. So you basically click here, upload the report, and 
it will become part of the case. So once you do that, it will go back to the uh, clinical side. They will get your, your report, the pathology report, as well as the second opinion report. And again, the images are always available for you to see here. Uh, you finished now that you've gotten, you know, you know, you've gotten the second opinion report, whether you've entered a diagnosis before, which was preliminary, or you haven't, you can finish the case. And uh, here, and it will fill it for you, and you say, done. And now I'll look at the other case just to finish it up here. Additional test, search, here it is. And we give you this widget to enter the results of your uh, tests, and they do render at the report. You can say positive and positive, and you can enter a comment. All of this will render at the report level. I'm not going to change the diagnosis that I had already here, uh, just for the sake of time, and I will say done. We go to the completed screen, and here is the case we just did. Um, you can look at the preliminary report. Here it is. This is the preliminary report, the lab information, the patient information, the ordering provider, and the dermatopathologist that read, and the results A, B, with the stain results over here, and then you get your gross description, microscopic and clinical. If the report is fine, you're happy with it, you can finalize it. Um, if you decide you need to edit, we basically, one click, you can click here, it'll take you back to this case, you can do any changes you decide you want to do, and you say done again and go back here to the completed screen. When you're, and we also give you a bill summary. If for some reason you want to look at what was ordered, it's all summarized here. Now, all of this will automatically go back to the practice management system if you have a, a charge bridge. So I'll say cancel, and I'll say finalize, and the report is signed, charges are gone, Everything is done. Now, where did it go? First of all, it doesn't disappear. You can always say finalize, yes. You can see them again, and you can amend them. But now we go back to the results log, and here they are. They've already been entered. If I click on enter results, the report is right here. If there was a second opinion report, it would show up here too. Emma, Emma loads the results for you in here and recommends an action and a plan. You can always overwrite, but all of this is done for you automatically based on the setup, and the MA or the dermatologist can move on with communicating with the patient the results. So it's pretty quick, pretty easy, and actually the turnaround time is pretty quick. Now, to in the next like, sort of three minutes before I pass it on to Dr. Pettit, I'll cover quickly the reporting screens. And I'll move to another system here. Okay, so in I went I sort of have a system here that has a lot of data, so I can show you. In the reporting screen, we basically it's a window to everything that's going on in the practice. You want to query by CPT. You want to look at all the cases with an 88305 that were signed in the months of December or January. Let's use the January here as an example. So search. Here you are, you'll get all the results back. You have the accession number, the specimen, and then you can decide, what do I want to see? I want to see the designator. I want to see the, who actually the provider that ordered them. I want to see the pathology CPT. I want to see the pathology ICD. So you basically can add any data that you want to see in that case. Uh, we give you, uh, for example, if you want to, Let's clear this and uncheck all here. And let's say you want to find all the melanoma cases, melanoma cases in, in the system. So you basically search by pathology diagnosis and you say search. And since I don't have a lot of them, I didn't put a filter by date here. Uh, we get all the melanoma cases and then you can say, well, I want to see the patient name. Uh, I want to see the patient insurance. If it's because if it's Medicare, then you have to report it. So you basically get the idea here. You know, you have ways to query on specific, use the filters, and then decide what data you want to see. You can also use the screen for locating an accession uh, 
case, like accession number. So if somebody calls in and says, you know, where is the case for this patient? You can always search by patient or by accession number if you happen to know it. And then using the right pieces of information here, you can tell exactly what it is in the module. So you don't have to go looking for it. Is it in the growth screen? Is it in the read screen? Is it in the completed screen? Who's worked on it? We give you basically, we audit everything. The person that accession, the person that growth, read, signed, etc. All of this is logged. So you can look this as a way also to look at productivity. How many cases did we gross? How many cases did we accession? And so on. Same thing applies to stains here. I'm not going to get into a lot of details, but you again can look at all the stains that you've done, their CPT code, the diagnosis, uh, and so on. And it'll really include also for those of you that might not have a, a bridge to the PM system, a two-way bridge where your charges will go over, this screen will give you all the information you need for billing. Um, one final thing, the, the report, the pathology report also shows up as an attachment in EMA. And what this allows your, the dermatologist to do is they can bring it up on an iPad and sign it and put any comments for the MA before uh, he or she calls the patient. So you have the option on an iPad, if you use the ModMed pathology module, to sign, uh, to have the dermatologist sign reports. So that's a quick overview. There is obviously a lot of details and workflows that are covered that I don't have time to, to go over today. Uh, so I'll pass it back to Sarah to introduce Dr. Pettit. Great, thank you so much, Amr, for that demonstration of ModMed pathology. Um, now we would like to introduce Dr. Matthew Pettit of Southeast Dermatology to speak about his experience using ModPed, ModMed pathology. Dr. Pettit. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, so we started uh, using ModMed pathology since uh, almost the creation of it. We've probably done a, a almost maybe a couple thousand specimens using it. And uh, just one is uh, very supportive of the product. I think it's a wonderful product. It's really uh, generated a lot of time savings and uh, reduced some errors in our practice by using it. Um, before I was a, a dermatopathologist and, and before I became a dermatologist, I was also an anatomic pathologist. So I did have some experience with multiple LIS systems. And I think uh, modern medicine has done a wonderful job of creating a, a pretty robust system uh, incorporated into the EHR. So I've, I've been very impressed with it. Um, just to give you some background about our practice, we're a single specialty group. We have eight dermatologists, a most surgeon, and one dermatopathologist. Uh, we have two practice locations, so those of you that have more than one practice location that you get uh, biopsies from, uh, ModMed pathology certainly uh, accommodates that. And we do about 12,000 skin specimens per year. Um, and I think the system is a, a robust system. If you have uh, 30, 40, 50,000 specimens, you should, you should ha have no problem using the system. And at the same time, if you're a smaller group and only have uh, you know, a, a thousand or a lot less specimens, the system's very adaptable to, to that also. Um, we've also been uh, fortunate or unfortunate to go through different, uh, we've had lots of different scenarios as far as how we process our specimens and who processes them. Uh, initially, we did only the professional component, so all our slides were processed by outside facilities. Uh, and then over time, we finally developed our own lab in-house, and so now we do, we do both the technical and professional components. So I've had experience using the system both ways, whether you do the technical in-house or whether you do the uh, uh, technicals processed by another lab. I've had a, have, we've used several different accession series uh, to accommodate that. And just uh, the wonderful thing about this ModMed pathology program is that it, it incorporates all those different scenarios, whether you do your technical in-house or whether you are uh, sending it to an outside facility, it really accommodates all those different scenarios. Uh, we also get about 100 specimens from outside physicians, so we do do some uh, consult type work, and it accommodates that also. Uh, and additionally, uh, you know, with insurance, some of our specimens, even though we do the biopsies, uh, we, our providers are taking the biopsies, we still have to send a proportion of our specimens out if it's a better benefit for the patient, uh, insurance-wise. And, of course, uh, it, it's adaptable to that also. Uh, next slide. So that's just a general overview of our practice. Um, 
So before we had monomyth pathology, we actually had three different types of, uh, we had three different systems. We had a pathology system, we had the Emma, mod, uh, Emma Modernizing Medicine as an EHR, and then we had a billing system and our practice management system, which were all completely separate. Uh, we went through a lot of the discussions, a lot of meetings, trying to decide whether we wanted to try to uh, get uh, bridge, bridges created between the different systems, whether we should try to do things uh, with electronic bridges. Uh, that became kind of a, uh, an expensive prospect. Uh, so finally, when modernizing medicine came up with the generate, generating this monument pathology module, it was, a, it was a great savings for us. You know, initially, all their pathology requisitions, all that data had to be manually entered into our pathology system. So when you had the anatomic site, the clinical diagnosis, the morphology, all that had to be manually entered into a pathology system. Uh, when after I signed our report, we printed the report. They were uploaded into the ER, EHR, and then of course we had to eventually get all the ICD-9 and CPT codes from the pathology system manually entered into our billing software. So there was a lot of data entry, but we basically had a full-time staff member doing all the data entry for our pathology system. They were doing the uh, you know, between put stuff from the requisitions into the pathology system or uh, printing out pathology reports and uploading them to the HR or actually putting all the charges into our billing system. I had a full-time staff member doing all that work for me and it was uh, pretty tedious. And because of that, there's just, boy, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for error. Anytime you reduplicate data entry, uh, things get transposed, words get transposed, and uh, it was just uh, very inefficient, very prone to errors. So our next slide. So after ModMed Pathology Module, all this became integrated. Our billing system, our pathology system, and our AHR all became integrated into, into an elect electronic seamless type of uh, integration, and it was really a great time savings. I think I estimated, uh, you know, now I have a, I probably saved 75% uh, of all the time spent. Now we have uh, one staff member part time, uh, you know, taking care of some of this, uh, the grossing dictations and, and so forth. So it's been a, a tremendous time saving. Uh, all our final pathology reports flow directly into the AHR. Uh, they're immediately available for clinicians to review. It's no longer a, a period where we have to print something and upload it or save it to a desktop and upload it. As soon as I sign out a case, uh, the clinicians can immediately look at the results. Um, all the uh, CPT and ICD-10 codes flow seamlessly now into our practice management billing software. And, uh, and now, of course, we're using ICD-9-10. I've had no problems whatsoever with the conversion. I was using the mod methodology when we were doing the ICD-9 and then during the conversion that, on that big day and everything. It was just another day of work. It was beautiful. All the everything just seamlessly uh, converted to ICD-10, and I haven't had any problems at all with that. And I think, uh, boy, your uh, providers in your group or uh, your practice, uh, the auto population of the diagnosis and clinical plan when they review the results section has probably been one of the, the neatest things about this mod med pathology model module. Meaning, even if you have, you know, you know, when we have to send outside. Uh, slides outside laboratories to, to generate uh, a report for us. You know, the, the clinician has to actually, uh, including myself, we have to uh, populate the results section, generate a plan, but with the modern methodology, when it's all this integration, that, that, that all that auto populates for us. So if you have a basal cell or a squamous cell, it just immediately puts a diagnosis into your results field and generates a plan for you. And that's probably been the, the greatest feedback I've got from our practice, from the, the actual dermatologists that uh, read my reports, is that they really love the way it audit populates into the results field. So that's a big time saver for the dermatologists. So with this, it is a very integrated system. Everything's at your fingertips, um, and I, it's been it's been wonderful. It really has cut down uh, uh, errors. It's increased efficiency of our office. And it's increased the efficiency of our dermatologists who actually have to review the results. Um, and finally, I just have one more slide to show you. Um, you know, with having some experience with different pathology systems and different LIS systems, I've never found a more integrated uh, system than this, meaning that with the results getting integrated directly into the medical record and, and, and the results section for the clinician review, there's not any other type of system that does that. 
Um, as uh, Almer showed you too, um, it's because you're already on Emma, when you're signing out your cases, you have access to all the clinical notes, you have access to the clinical history, you have photos that are readily accessible. So I do think this is the future. Uh, as a dermatopathologist, uh, we always uh, uh, get upset when we don't have clinical photos or get upset when we don't have much history and it becomes much more difficult to do the clinical pathologic correlation. Well, with the modern methodology module and integration, having those photos and the clinical notes directly at our fingertips as we're signing out cases, boy, it's really, uh, I really think we do a much a, a higher quality work now by having that information all readily accessible. Um, I do want to emphasize how customizable it is, whether you do your technical outside or whether you do your technical component inside, it, uh, it, it's all customizable to whatever situation. Uh, uh, Amir, I think you had a home run with that of, of, of accommodate different types of practices uh, in this model. Um, and also, just it's a very efficient pathology system, too. Uh, I think Amir showed you a lot of the, the great functionality of it. But uh, to be honest, uh, the vast majority of our cases are, are basal cells, squamous cells, intradermal nevi, dysplastic nevi. Uh, simple uh, diagnoses. We want to be able to rapidly go through the, and we sign out cases. And this system allows you to do that. Once you get your templates all built in there, they give you about a thousand templates already built into the system. Then you just customize those templates. And once you get that all built in, it takes several weeks to kind of kind of get all those templates used to using them. But once those templates are built in, you can sign out cases very, very, very efficiently. You, you just, you know, I, I use BCC next case, SCC next case, and it just still populates all those fields with the micro description, populates with uh, ICD-9, CPT code, and it's a very efficient system. So it's very customizable, and very efficient. And just I, I want to give a shout out to the to the staff that put that behind this product. Uh, Amir Saw, who was, uh, gave you the demo today, he's the one that developed this program. And uh, Boy, they've just been wonderful as far as if you have any suggestions, comments, feedback, need help. They're just very accessible. Uh, they stand behind the product. They make improvements. They're continually upgrading and, and modifying the product uh, based on uh, user feedback. And so I couldn't give a, enough uh, uh, applause to the, to the group that put this mod -med pathology module together. If your practice uh, needs a pathology module, if they're using one that's inefficient, if they want a more integrated system, uh, I really think you should look into this system. It's, it's been wonderful, us, and I'm, I couldn't say more positive things about it. I think that's all I have to say. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Pettit. We really appreciate you being uh, on this webinar tonight to share your experience with ModMed Pathology. Um, we'd now like to open the floor for questions tonight. Again, if you'd like to submit one, please do so by typing in your question into the questions box on your GoToWebinar panel on the right-hand side of your screen. I'd also like to add that after you exit tonight's webinar, you will see a post-webinar survey pop up on your screen, and we'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds just to answer those questions. So we'll jump right into Q&A. Um, the first question is, will this work with other practice management systems, such as clinics? Uh, yes, we basically, at this point, uh, charges will go over to any practice system, whether it's a direct uh, bridge or a LK bridge. Uh, the one last uh, PM system we're still working on supporting is uh, CareCloud and, sorry, Cario, and that should be happening any time now. Great. Uh, next question is, we outsource the technical component. Is it possible to link up with a lab so that the grossing report can be uploaded into ready to gross? Uh, not at this time. In fact, I had a slide here which, given the time, I, I didn't sort of go to to discuss a little bit of the features we're going to add. And maybe this is sort of a, a good time to actually touch upon it. Um, one second here. And we are one of some of the things we're doing in an upcoming research which coming up really in early March is adding printing capabilities, more flexible in accessioning, better error handling. Uh, the, the things we're going to work on in the next uh, few months following that is really uh, better routing functionality to route to the, the requisition to the pathology module. And then as you see, there is this bullet of receiving requisitions or receiving results 
electronically and sending them electronically. Today we don't support that, but it's definitely one of the high priority items once we get done with the uh, few sort of things we're working on right now. So the short answer is today it, we can't. I think one of the things that most of the users, our current users that outsource the technical component do, they either um, upload the gross report, most of them will use the manual description. So there is a, the manual description of the gross, you basically set up templates potentially or type in the gross description you receive from the lab. And if you set up templates, as I showed, you can call them you know, P1, P2 and so on. You can bring them up and add the information. I also am working with a practice that they will just put a standard statement in there which uh, comes from the default screen that says gross, gross has been performed at such and such a lab and the results are you know, some, some standard statement so they don't have to actually enter the gross description. And then they will have obviously on file the gross results that they received from that lab. Next question. Great. Um, I see two questions that are related here. Um, can you discuss the process of ad adding this module and how much does it cost? Um, the the cost it, it's a transaction uh, model so it really is dependent on how much you use it we do have a minimum monthly uh, charge of two hundred dollars which covers about covers a hundred requisitions uh, but beyond that so it's a two dollar per requisition let's say for the first one hundred and we're talking by the way I'm trying to make sure to emphasize we're talking requisitions not specimens so your requisition could have one specimen on it, could have 10 specimens on it. It's the same uh, transaction fee. The, the cost then goes down based on volume. It's sort of a bracketed system that as you, as you do more, your, your price goes down. So it could range anywhere on average, you know, anywhere from $2 to probably, you know, 50 to 30 cents on very high volumes. So, it's really when if you are interested, obviously, and can't, you know, we will when you uh, work with our uh, service team or sales team, they will sort of detail you, give you more details. But that's sort of the range from two to anywhere to you know 30 cents on very high volumes. And the process of adding it? The process of adding it is we enable it very easily. You need an addendum, so when you contact Modernizing Medicine, uh, if you're interested, uh, you know, either somebody from our sales. Uh, department will get in touch with you. Uh, we, it's a matter of turning it on. Uh, there is training that's required. Uh, while it's easy to use, it's given you know, the sort of mission, mission critical nature of what this module does. We, we really have to do, uh, we do about four hours of training and a Q&A session that's part of the addendum or the contract that you would get. So uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward turning it on and using it after, the, after you complete the training. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is, will we be able to track additional locations? For example, if we have three locations and we accession differently for each location? You, uh, as I sh sort of uh, touched upon when I did the manual and the auto sequence, you can create as many sequences as you want. So if you want to have an accession sequence per location, even per provider, you can do that and then you can track them separately with separate sequences and then the, you can obviously look at the reporting screen as I said and it will give you an idea of how much you're doing for each location but the answer the short answer is yes you can okay great does this module have a way of tracking all results to make sure that all results are in I am not sure I think I need more information on this question okay um, Whitney if you wouldn't mind clarifying your question that would be great um, we'll move on to the next one. We read for some outside offices who also use, use EMMA. Is there anything in the works to allow reports to go electronically to these practices that would populate in their lab results field? So today you, you can't, as I, as I mentioned, and I think I touched upon that. So the answer is this is one of our plans. I don't have a target date yet, but it's definitely a high priority uh, sort of feature or capability that we want to add to the module. Great. Can grossing be done with a combination of manual and automatic components? For example, manual being the description portion and automatic being adding the number of cassettes? So Yes. And, and the way we ended up, we sort of flip-flopped on this and changed the design a few times. 
Uh, after, again, as Dr. Pettit said, we actually, you know, listen to a lot of the feedback we receive. The way the growth screen works today is the manual, if you have something in the manual description, that actually is your description. That's the part that's going to render on the report. Anything you put in the structured screen will be used internally by the module, but will not render. So you can put your description in the manual, and then you can, for example, tell us uh, you know, how many cassettes or how many pieces or how many slides you make. So we can then use this information for label printing, and also you can use this information for reporting purposes. Great. Is the patient able to see the pathology report attachment through the portal? Yes, I mean, that's part of EMA today. If you decide to make it available on the portal, it will be available on the portal for the patient. That's a, you know, a the dermatologist's decision. But yes, results can be made available at the portal. Great. Is the pathology report signed by the clinical provider electronically, or is it added as a signature box to the path report attachment? Uh, today, the only way you can, the dermatologist can sign it is on the iPad, and they basically can use a stylus or their finger, and they can basically sign it with their uh, stylus and put in any comments there. And, and it's saved with the signature and the comments. Okay, and back to the question before we were talking about um, to make it, making sure all results are in. Um, Whitney has clarified, we use a book to log every biopsy. I use that book to make sure that we receive results for all biopsies in a timely manner and that none are left out. Is there a process like that within mod ben pathology? I mean, the only, the, the, I can see that the reporting screen potentially could be the equivalent because if you go to the reporting screen and say, look at the things you've done today or during a certain time, uh, you can then, um, I, I can sort of quickly take you to the reporting screen. And, and again, uh, Whitney, please feel free uh, to email us or, um, and we can sort of elab. I, I, my, my email, uh, I'll give it to you guys on the phone. If you can write it, it's amr.asal at modmed.com. If you have any questions, feel free to send them to me. If I didn't respond to your questions, again, it's amr, A-M-R dot A-S-S-A-L at modmed.com. Uh, but in the, if I go into the module here, uh, in the reporting screen here, I can see that this is the place that you can actually figure out if, let's say, uh, I'm going to simulate this. This is probably not the best. Uh, let me go to the... Uh, other system that has data in it. So let's go to the reporting screen here. I'm going to simulate a single day or, you know, with a month, but let's say you want to see uh, all the cases that came in uh, were serviced based on a service day, for example, or the accession time frame. You, you need to decide which one would make more sense, but let's say I want to see every, let's assume everything from the clinical side goes to the pathology module. You don't send anything out to another lab. I would probably use the service. Otherwise, I would use the accession. So I'll simulate a, you know, a period. I'll go from December 1st to, let's say, uh, today. And I will say, give me uh, all the cases during that period. And here they are. And now I want to see if they've been uh, grossed, have they been read, have they been signed. And, and basically this will tell me um, where everything is. So through here, you can say, oh, these two cases, they have not been read or signed yet. Now, in, an, in the upcoming release in early March, we are actually making, adding a feature where you will be able, those designators here, the A and B, these will be hyperlinks. So if you want to go and find A or B, you'll be able to immediately from this screen go and see where they are. But that is probably, you know, unless I miss, I'm misunderstanding the question, this is the place where you can track and see where things are. Okay, great. And I think we have time for one last question. Um, how long does it take to set up training once the addendum is signed and executed? Um, it, it really, that really depends on how many, you know, customers we have that are, you know, the pipeline and the queue for training. But we've been pretty good so far. I think we've, uh, the training is going or moving along pretty good. 
uh, but I really cannot give you a specific time frame. But again, once you're, you know, if, if the legal sort of paperwork is done, we put you in the queue immediately and we'll get you scheduled as soon as we can. Great, thank you so much. And uh, I did just want to note that if we didn't get to your question tonight, we did have an overwhelming amount of them come in. Um, we will definitely reach out to you as soon as we as soon as we can, and we will be offering a recording of this webcast again. Um, it'll be posted on MS Central and also emailed out to everyone who attended. Um, so those are all the questions we are we have time to answer this evening. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Um, and please don't forget to take our post-webinar survey after the broadcast ends, and have a great evening, everyone.